Welcome to our digital electronics tutorial and uh, today, yeah, that's right, we're going to discuss about the synchronous up and down counters. Alright, so there we go. So in this uh, tutorial, uh, before going into the details about the counters, if you'll just would remember from uh, the previous tutorials on counters, we just said that the synchronous counters are much faster uh, compared to asynchronous ones. So basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, you know, give you the uh, circuits, okay, about the um, up and down counters constructed using the synchronous mode of operation, okay, and of course, flip-flops. So this is the, uh, sorry there, that's supposed to be the counter. Just don't mind it, my mistake. So this is the up counter, which I'm going to show you over here. So before I go on to uh, the details about the up counter, I'll just let me just mention that uh, here we're just going to construct the counters using JK flip-flops. Okay, so if you all would remember in this case that the truth table, okay, of a JK flip-flop looks somewhat like this. That's the J and K inputs. That's Q and Q bar. Okay, that's right. And if you just, you know, uh, give the clock input, okay. So let's just consider about the uh, negative edge triggered JK flip flops. So if y'all would have, you know, uh, J0 and K1, okay, and let's say the previous state of the uh, flip flop was something like, um, let's say 0, yeah, Q equals to, okay, so let's say that Q was equals to 0 and Q bar was, let's say, previously equal to 1, then upon, uh, you know, the presence of the clock signal, if J and K inputs are, you know, 0 and 1, we're uh, gonna have the output looking something like this as, yeah, similarly as 0 and 1. It'll just remain in the same state whatsoever. So now if we uh, would have the, you know, uh, J and K inputs, you know, just changed to something like this, then we're gonna have the output looking something like yeah, like something like this. So now, uh, whenever we'd have, uh, you know, J and K uh, both at zero, zero logic levels, so then the output would just remain in the whichever state it was previously. And if we're just going to put both the J and K inputs as, you know, to the logic level one, then the outputs would just keep on toggling. So there you can see the output just toggles. So here, basically, in the, the construction of the up counters, we're just going to use these two states where I mean the toggling mode and the zero zero states okay so if you just uh, take a look at the uh, circuit uh, of the um, yeah I'll just change the color over here yeah the circuit of the uh, up counters that we're just gonna show you and let me just mention that we're gonna construct a three bit up counter which means that we're gonna use three flip-flops basically since it's a three bit up counter okay so there it is so here we have the first flip-flop okay the second one and there goes the third one so here are the J and K inputs basically and their outputs also so just give me some time while I just you know uh, draw the diagram over here as it's quite critical to your understanding without the diagram it's well it's a lot lot more difficult so therefore um, just kindly bear with me for some time I'll just you know I finished the drawing the diagram quickly so the flip-flops, as you can see over here, are basically you know, negative edge-triggered flip-flops, as I just previously said. And since these are all, you know, synchronous counters, they will be just clocked simultaneously with this common clock line. So apart from that, the um, J and K inputs of the first flip-flop, that's one, two, and three. Yeah, that's right. So the first flip-flops, J and K inputs are tucked away to the logic level one, as you can see over here. So other than that, the output, that's Q output of the... Uh, from the flip-flop one drives the uh, J and K inputs of flip-flop two and apart from that we are gonna construct this AND gate driven logic circuit in order to set the logic levels at the J and K inputs of flip-flop three so there it is we're just gonna obtain our outputs from the uh, Q yeah that's the Q outputs of each of the flip-flops so now if you just you know uh, consider this circuit okay if I just you know give you the states right here so that's Q3 Q2 and Q1 so let me just mention before I begin that Q1 represents the LSP of the uh, count I mean that's the uh, each of the states that's the binary count and flip-flop 3 gives us the MSB so that's right so here okay I'll just use white so over here as you can see 
that uh, since these are you know negative edge triggered flip flops basically so upon the arrival okay let's just assume that all the flip flops remain at the states 0 0 0 previously so now upon the arrival of the negative edge of the first clock pulse what happens is that all the uh, you know uh, since flip flop 1 is at the toggle mode so therefore its output just toggles to logic level 1 from logic level 0 so now uh, here output of the uh, flip flop 1 is previously 0 so there there is no change at flip-flop 2 and 3 respectively so there you can see the output just moves from the zeroth state to the first state and again upon the arrival of the uh, negative edge of the second clock pulse what happens is that since now flip-flop I mean the output of flip-flop 1 is at logic level 1 over here so the logic levels available at the JNK inputs to that of flip-flop 2 is a 1 so flip-flop 2 is basically in the toggle mode so when the negative edge of the second clock pulse arrives the flip-flop 2's output just toggles from 0 to 1 while that of flip-flop 1 toggles from 1 to 0 so there you can see it moves on to the second state so here as you can see the count basically you know, increases so the up counter basically represents a uh, forward counter in which the count increases state by state so now since it's a 3 bit up counter so the maximum number of states that this counter can or rather the maximum number of counts that this counter can make is basically given by 2 to the power 3 that is 8 so the counter would go through 8 binary states okay counting up to uh, I mean counting from 0 up to uh, that of state 7 so therefore uh, the counter would just you know continue counting up to the state 1 1 1 that's triple 1 so which represents the state 7 okay in the presence of the negative edge triggering of the clock pulses okay so that's basically the up counter I mean the 3-bit up counter uh, in synchronous mode of operation so apart from that if we just go quickly to the down counter over here okay so the down counter as you can see okay so before I go to the down counter I'll just give you the timing diagram which I almost forgot in the uh, yeah in case of the up counter so the timing diagram would look somewhat like this okay so there is the clock that's Q1 that's Q2 and this is Q3 so there's go clock Q1 Q2 and Q3 that's right so the clock inputs you know keep on coming at regular intervals okay depicted in white okay so there you go and now a uh, q1 would just be clocked at the negative edge of the clock pulses so it just extends from the negative edge to edge of the clock pulses and q2 would just be you know um, set to the uh, logic levels one whenever it encounters uh, the uh, negative edge of the clock pulses under the presence of the uh, uh, yeah at the presence of the uh, Q1 output at the logic 1 level so therefore it just gets clocked right over here and continues up to this level okay so apart from that Q3 would just be you know um, clocked somewhere over here when the Q2 output just is going low so it just it's it, it just you know gets clocked at this point of the negative uh, edge of this clock signal when the um, it just encounters the uh, I mean when it just you know gets the uh, Q2 output at logic 1 level in its inputs so this thing just you know keeps on going okay so as you can see if, if you do if you just gonna you know draw more of them over here something like this yeah that's right so again uh, yeah that's right so if we're gonna do it again over here then we're just gonna find that uh, yeah and it just you know keep on extending somewhere over here so these are basically the time axis uh, that you can see over here and if you just compare the timing diagram then we we can see that here the flip-flop was I mean the counter was at the 0, 0, 0 state and then it moved to 0, 0, 1 okay so we take each of the negative edge of the clock pulses and then 0, 1, 0 and then finally 0, 1, 1 and this again moves to the 1, 0, 0 and it just goes on and then 0 sorry there one zero one and so on till it reaches the seventh state so that's basically the timing diagram over here yeah the timing diagram right so uh, let's just quickly move on to the down counter and explain how the mechanism of the down counter takes place okay so there you go that's the down counter that I'm gonna talk about next so okay let's take white in order to draw the circuit of the down counter so 
here also we're just taking a 3-bit down counter because that's you know um, quite comprehensive for you all to understand okay so there goes our JK flip-flops okay so that's J1 K1 inputs Q1 and Q1 bar that's J2 K2 okay and Q2 and Q2 bar okay just bear with me uh, for some time while I just you know finish uh, doing this di diagram over here as you can see okay so that's almost there so just kindly bear with me okay so here uh, again we'll have this same you know type of clock input which is of course a common line as you can see over here that clocks all the flip-flops simultaneously so apart from that uh, as you can see here the out I mean the J and K voltage levels over here that's the uh, input that's uh, to the flip-flop 2 over here that's 1 2 and 3 so the uh, J and K inputs is just triggered by the Q1 bar output of uh, flip-flop 1 and again this thing I mean that's the Q bar, Q1 uh, bar output you know sets itself into a I mean yeah a logic circuitry constructed by means of a single AND gate and sets the input logic levels at the J and K terminals of the flip-flop 3. So we're going to obtain the output from uh, this circuit from the Q terminals of each of the flip-flops. So there you can see uh, the flip-flop 1 here represents the LSB of the count and that flip-flop 3 represents the MSB. So just quickly moving on to the uh, table of uh, you know the states that it just transits through. So there you go. Yeah, I just can't wait to get onto the table. Okay, so I'll use the white color to demonstrate. So let's just uh, you know consider uh, first the, uh, the um, you know all the flip flops remain at the logic level zero 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 over here. Okay, so now there's the clock. So upon the arrival of the first clock pulse, what happens is that just take note that whenever the the you know the outputs that's Q. Okay, are I mean the Q outputs are at zero 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 level. All the Q one bar outputs are at the logic level 1. So here uh, flip-flop 2 has you know the chance of toggling as well as that of flip-flop 3. So whenever we apply the clock input or rather the negative edge of the first clock pulse arrives so the, the I mean the output of the uh, flip-flop 1 toggles to the logic 1 state from the logic 0 state. So there you go we have a 1 over here and then again that of the flip-flop 2 and 3 as well do the same okay so we're getting a 1 1 1 and again if we just uh, wait for the uh, negative edge of the second clock pulse to arrive so whenever the output of this flip-flop changes from 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 then Q bars just change from 0 I mean yeah just they just change from 1 to 0 okay so now at this moment whenever the second clock pulses negative edge arrives the uh, flip-flop 1 toggles from uh, the logic 1 state to the logic 0 state while uh, you know the flip-flops 2 and 3 having a logic level 0 at their J and K inputs okay due to the logic circuitry and all they'll just retain their states that is 1 and 1 so again if the third clock pulse arrives okay then upon its negative edge we'll have the Q I mean the flip-flop Q1 uh, that's the Q1 output of flip-flop 1 you know just toggling back to the logic 1 state and when uh, you know uh, the Q1 uh, output just moves on to the uh, logic level uh, 0 over here in this case when it just moves on to logic level 0 its Q1 bar output just changes to logic level 1 so flip-flop 2 having a uh, you know logic level 1 uh, on its uh, you know its uh, J and K inputs will just toggle from logic level 1 to logic level 0 while that of flip-flop 3 having st I mean just still having a logic level 0 on its J and K inputs would just retain its previous state so there you can see that this flip-flop is just you know counting backwards yeah it just you know counting backwards so if we just start from here that's the state 7 that this is the state 6 and this is the state 5 and this would just you know go on till it will reach the state 0 okay so the uh, down counter what it basically does is that it just counts backwards and if I you know give you the uh, logic level diagrams okay or rather the timing diagrams over here okay so timing diagrams are often referred to as logic level diagrams okay so don't mind that it's not uh, I mean both of them you know mean the same thing so that's the clock Q1 Q2 and this is Q3 and then if you just take a good look at it so there's the uh, you know the time axis in each 
of the uh, you know uh, the graphs so here are the you know regularly uh, placed uh, clock pulses that uh, you can see over here so when the negative edge of the first clock pulse arrives okay so all of the queues i mean the outputs of all the flip flops you know just get clock to the logic one level okay and now when the q one's output you know drops at the second i mean the negative edge of the second clock pulse q2 and q3 just still continues their journey and then again uh, when uh, the q1 rises over here then you can see the clock pulse of that of the q2 you know coming down right here on the negative edge of the third clock pulse okay so if you just take a good look at that of the uh, output from uh, the that of the uh, flip flop one then it just you know continues and uh, you know uh, falls off or rather just originates and falls off at each of the negative edges of the clock pulses so here uh, the that of the, i mean the output of flip flop 3 would just you know, continue throughout okay and then it'll just f i mean and you can see here the stages you know 0 0 0 and then 0 um, sorry there that's my mistake 1 1 1 and then we'll have you know if you just divide the whole thing with this negative edges of all the uh, that of the uh, you know clock pulses that occurs right over here so then you'll get uh, over here something like this you'll get you know one one zero as you can see the various states that it's moving through so one zero one and then one uh, zero zero and finally this whole thing just uh, falls off at this negative level so we'll have zero um, yeah so we'll, we'll have this uh, you know pulse over here again rising up okay so we'll have zero one one and this will just continue till it you know uh, again over here in this uh, mode it'll just you know fall off so you will get again uh, you know zero one zero and then finally all the states would just go on up till it reaches zero 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 voltage level so there it is uh, that's the uh, timing uh, diagram of the uh, you know yep the timing uh, diagram for the uh, down counter of the um, yeah the uh, down counter using the synchronous uh, circuits so here we just wrap up our discussion on the synchronous uh, up and down counters so hope you've enjoyed our tutorial thanks for watching meet you in the next tutorial so till then it's thank you for now and goodbye